Oh yeah, baby. We got another tankless water heater here. This is one that I actually did service on. Um, I did a descaling. I did a mighty fine job of descaling that. But I called the manufacturer because it was still throwing the same code. And the manufacturer said that it was probably the thermal fuse. So I let the customer know we could replace the thermal fuse out. Um, but the manufacturer recommended doing the heat exchanger. And I was like, told the customer this unit's pretty old. It was like 12 years old. Um, and they just bought the house. So they just want stuff to work. They got kids. So I let them know. I mean, we could do all that. Um, but the unit is getting kind of old it did look in pretty good condition but they were like well what about just replacing it and i was like well we could do that too baby so we're gonna get rid of this old noritz heater um i don't really mess with noritz too much uh, I, I like to use the navian heaters they're just to me they're a lot better um a lot of the ones that i have to go to service to are like noritz um, but the navians they're they are pretty reliable i would say so so we're gonna get rid of this old one, get it off the wall. Ooh, pull that down a little bit. And for the new heater, I like to prepare everything before I hang it up, just because depending on the location, it can get kind of tight in there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tighten it up with the channel locks. Comment in the comments. Why did you do that? Because I'm a gangster. So we're gonna tighten everything up. Teflon, dope. I know the boomers in the comments hate that, but that's what we do here, baby. So we're gonna get everything nice and fitted on here before I hang it up on the wall and finish that up. I got a little dope mess right there. Whoopsie, wipe it down with the cloth. So we're gonna get this gas tee on here, get that nice and fitted, and then put it up on the wall. This thing was like 80 pounds. That's my workout for the day. So we're going to mount it to the wall, get it nice and tight, make sure it doesn't fall. Obviously I hung up the bracket, don't worry you guys. I just didn't want to do that on video. So we're going to uh, put this gas line together, install the TMP valve. Um, you can't really tell, but this was like a really tight spot. But I had to extend this gas line up a little bit. And I already know you guys in the comments are going to be like, holy God, you put a union without a shutoff valve above it? Yeah, baby, I did. But uh, there's actually a shutoff right above um, where this gas line ties into. So no big deal, baby. So we're gonna start fitting these males on here so that we can run the water lines and get everything rolling, baby. Get the pro press, get it going. I know you guys in the comments just hate on the pro press. Pro press is untested technology. Well, I'm testing it and it seems like it works fine. So we're gonna get all of our measurements here. Get this new piece on here. Clickety clack, pro press is back, baby. So we're gonna got the cold line running in and then we gotta extend this uh, hot line over. Um, right here was a pretty tight fit. It was, it was really tight if you know what I'm saying. So we're gonna get all this pro pressed in and now that there's water running to it. So now we're gonna do the condensate line and the TMP valve. Um, I know some people use the acid neutralizers and whatever, whatever. But uh, we don't have to use them here, so I'm just going to tie this TMP valve into the condensate drain or condensate line, whatever. So we're going to get that on. That's all nice and dandy. And then now we're going to put in the condensate line. All that runs to the sump pump. So, and then the vent, uh, original vent for that old water heater was a three inch, but this one is a two inch. So we tied that back in, turned everything on, adjusted all these settings, and now they have hot water. Yeah, baby.